Hey guys, I was in Ikea bar the other day, like I normally am, and I found this. I actually found two of them. I bought both, uh, second hand. They're an old uh, regulated DC power supply. TMO 18-2.2. That means 18 volt, 2.2 amp. A nice voltage for prototyping and doing general electronics work. Good current output. It's made by a company called Takasago. That's a, it's a Japanese company. And um, yeah, I found two of them. They both seem to work. And yeah, it's good for uh, doing electronics. I can stack the second one next to this one and dual voltages. So yeah, it's all good. Paid 3,240 yen. So it's basically 35 bucks each. Pretty good price for two little power supplies. Two, almost two and a half amps. So I'll take this thing apart, I'll take the cover off and um, we'll have a look inside and I'll give you a quick rundown on how this sort of thing works. It's, it's actually pretty simple in theory. So I'll get the cover off and we'll have a look. Okay. It's a little bit dirty inside, I haven't cleaned them. They're basically as I, as I bought them. So you can see here, we've got a main circuit board, we've got two gauges, switches and output here, main transformer and a big heat sink on the back with our main switching tr uh, transistor. That's a Toshiba 2SD873. So basically how it works is, we've got our mains comes in with a knotted uh, strain relief there. I might do something about that because that's not a good thing. Um, what happens is when the wire gets pulled, it pulls on the two conductors unequally and can actually break one of the conductors. It's uh, it's not ideal. Actually in Australia, uh, under the, uh, the wiring rules, this is expressly forbidden in the rules. There's actually a rule saying, do not, you shall not, it says you shall not knot the cord to um, add strain relief. So I might do something about that because I'm not too too happy about keeping that there. But that's another thing. Um, comes into the uh, the fuse here, just a standard glass fuse, and then into the uh, transformer. Of course, we've got a the active. Is that the active or neutral? We've got the fuse on one, and then the other side comes to the main power switch and back into the transformer. So that's our mains wiring there. Fuse, transformer, switch. So that's um pretty basic. There's no actual earth on this either. See that? Two pronged. So if you want to earth this thing, you're going to have to do it yourself separately. Maybe put a wire on one of these screws. Or I might put an earth lead on. But yeah, that's interesting. But then again, a lot of Japanese appliances aren't earthed. That's just how they are. Um, okay, so we've got the transformer. That's got a multiple taps, which is switched by this relay here. So as you, you dial up and down, um, the, the relay will switch in and out to choose the best winding to give you, you know, your, your chosen output voltage and current. Then we've got a, a bridge rectifier here. That's converting the, uh, the AC from the, uh, the transformer into our DC. And we've got a, a big fat smoothing capacitor. Now, none of this of course is actually altering the voltage to our precise value. The way that works is with this chip here. They've actually scrubbed off the numbers which is a bit of a bummer. I, it's going to be very hard to replace if ever that dies. Um, but that's basically going to be a voltage comparator. And what that thing does is actually looks at two voltages and then compares them and puts out a, a, a voltage which, or a signal which is in proportion to the, the difference between those two voltages. And the two voltages that's looking at is the voltage that's coming out of the front, out of here, compared to the voltage that you set with a dial. Same with the current, it'll be comparing that as well. But it doesn't look at the current directly. What it does is it looks at the voltage drop across this shunt resistor as a, that's basically as a function of current, you know, Ohm's law. So we know that resistance is 0 0.2 ohms. Um, a certain uh, current flowing through that will have a certain voltage drop across that resistor. It's basically Ohm's law stuff. 
So what that does is that looks at those voltages, compares them, and then puts out a voltage which is in proportion to that. Then there'll be a small, like a oscillator or something like that on here, which is producing a pulse width modulated signal. Um, or it might be just a, a linear voltage. Uh, I'd say it's going to be through this transistor here. And then uh, that drives our power transistor at the back. So what's traveling through this, what this is allowing through is determined by the difference in the output compared to our, uh, our set voltage with the pot determined by this. So you turn this up, this will see a difference. It will then increase the voltage through to here to, you know, to control this. This will then allow more voltage through to bring it up to the, the set level and vice versa going downwards. So that's basically how it works. It's it's not so complex. A lot of this electronics is, you know, it's the passives are just support circuitry. You got some calibration um, pots here that'll be adjusting the signal just to make things spot on. Um, filtering and smoothing and whatnot. You can make this sort of an idea very, very easily uh, with only a few parts. But to make an output that's stable and smooth, that's where the bit more complexity comes in. So there's not really much else to say. Most of these sort of power supplies are pretty much this. This is all it is. Um, down at the base level. Obviously, if you get something like a, a Rigol, it's going to be a lot more complex because you've got digital displays and you've got you know three different outputs or you know all these different you know conditions you can set with the current and voltage on the front. But something simple where it's just a current dial and a, uh, a voltage dial, it's just a comparator running a transistor on a big fat heatsink from a, um, a transformer. Stick it through a, a capacitor and you've got a nice smooth output. This one, as you, you've seen already, has got the uh, analog gauges being an old unit. Um, I'm not going to swap those for digital. I'll just use my multimeter to see what the voltage is. These will give, get you in the ballpark to within about a quarter of a volt or so. Um, if you're looking carefully at the, the display, each mark is one volt. And here, each mark is 0.1 of an amp on here, on this scale. So you're going to get yourself pretty close, assuming that these are calibrated properly. But with a multimeter, it doesn't matter. I can dial that to around about 12 volts if I need 12 volts. And then I'll just look at my multimeter and go, yep, right there. Easy. Another good feature that these things have is the output switch. When you turn these power supplies on, as the transform magnetizes, as the capacitor charges, the power supply in here settles down, everything powers up and you know, it does its thing, you're going to get some spurious output. That's just the way it is. Um, it's going to take maybe a quarter of a second or so, who knows, depending on how much filtering and how big your transformer is. Um, you don't want to have things connected that are going to pop because you've got a big spike that comes out of here or a brownout or something, you know, dirty power. So usually you, you turn it on, then connect your load. But if you need to turn the load on and off easily, that's where this comes in. You can leave this unit turned on and just isolate your load. That way you're not going to have dirty power coming out every time you want to you know, turn your project off and then turn it back on again that just isolates the output, nothing else. This is what activates or energizes the electronics itself. So that's a nice little feature so you can just cleanly turn things on and off without you know, dirty power at all. So yeah, the pots are nice and big. You can see there, they're quite large. They've got a very, really nice smooth feel to them. So they look like they're quite good quality, which is a nice, uh, a nice touch. I'm probably gonna use some deoxit um, they got a, a deoxid fader which is designed for uh, pots. It's got like a cleaning and lubricating. So I'll spray that in there just to make sure these things are nice and lubricated and they, they're operating smoothly and you know, the, uh, the, as you turn it you're not getting funny output from them. And uh, yeah, give it a clean and they're going to be good to go. It's going to be quite nice. So anyway, just thought I'd show you what's inside one of these and give you a brief rundown of how they work. So I'll, um, I guess I'll see you next time.